one. A mother bargains with a God not listening. Dear God, I cannot offer you my life. I have five children. My life is not mine. So I offer you instead my blood engine father, my curdled mother, the sweet elderly couple across the street, the woman in aisle nine screaming at the sticky child, the sticky child, my uncles Gilbert, Philip and Vinnie full of needles, the homeless veteran with the empty cup, the next person who smiles at me at the gas station, friends Jane and Lisa and Becky and Meredith, the crossing guard, his four grandchildren, all of them, take all of them, please. Instead, please, to a mother explains death to her three-year-old child. Remember how I told you when the leaves fall from the trees and the sky holds gray and all of the animals retreat into their darkest place. It means that winter is coming. Well, do you see how stained the sky is this morning? How dark the clouds? See how Ingrid lost all of her leaves? See that empty crib? Three. The poet explains grief in allegorical terms. Grief is a small boy, pale as a bar of soap. His voice is the song of wires, the gush and whir of an oxygen tank at 8.39 a.m. I am not sure I can trust a boy like that. He provides no warnings, an old bursting water pipe, a sick syringe. He is king of the dirty baptism, the unrelenting god of nightmares polishing the knives to stash in the medicine cabinet, replacing the whiskey with photos of home. He feeds dreams to my unslept brain. Last night, I dreamt you broke free of the soil. Your skin was greased in a heavenly light, and I could hear the blood rushing inside you, your life coming back in waves of defiant joy. And you moved your high chair to the edge of the table, and you climbed up. And when I asked, are you real? You started eating from the vase of flowers. You said, the ghosts that move through you have only one name. Four. My three-year-old speaks logic at the funeral home. Oh. Ingrid is in always winter. Now she lives where it's winter all the time. 